Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm going to be taking you on an adventure through all of the different hydroponic system types and their best application for specific plant types. We're going to be looking at nutrient film technique, Dutch buckets, rain gutter growth and wicking style systems, as well as drain to waste, flood and drain, and the crack key deep water culture styles. Now, one of the questions I get asked the most on the channel is what plant types for what hydroponic systems? And I kind of want to steer you in a different direction when thinking about implementing hydroponic systems for plant types. For example, when I design a hydroponic system, I'm not particularly thinking about whether the plant is a fruiting plant, whether it's a leafy green or whether it's a herb. I'm more considering factors like physical size, whether it's annual, biannual or perennial, and what conditions it would traditionally be grown in. For example, here in my float box hydroponic system, I have Brussels sprouts and zucchini. If you were to lump all of the leafy greens together, you would include Brussels sprouts. And if you were to lump all of the fruiting species together, you would include zucchinis. However, I would not grow Brussels sprouts in an NFT for the exact same reason as I shouldn't have grown these broccolini in my NFT. They've just gotten too large and they're falling over causing the channels to topple and I would not grow zucchinis in a Dutch bucket. Now you could definitely grow zucchinis in a Dutch bucket, but with the systems that I have available, it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> and similarly, I probably shouldn't have grown these Brussels sprouts in this flood and drain hydroponic system. I was just unaware of how large they become before they start to actually sprout. So please keep that in mind as I'm discussing all of these hydroponic systems that there are exceptions to the rules depending on the plant's lifespan as well as the plant's physical characteristics and nutrient requirements. Okay, so let's have a look at all of the individual systems and the plant types and individual plants I think are appropriate for those systems. And then we can look at their versatility as a single system, as well as their implementation in a multi-system hydroponic ecosystem so that you can make the most out of the hydroponic technique of gardening. System number one, and one of my favorite hydroponic systems, it holds a place near and dear to my heart. It was the first hydroponic system that I set up and I've never stopped using it. The Nutrient Film Technique Hydroponic System. And I will never stop using it either. This is my answer for leafy greens. Yes, you can grow leafy greens in other systems and if you only have the space for say a rain gutter grow system, by all means, go and grow them in that system. But if you have a nutrient film technique hydroponic system, this is the last word on leafy greens. Yes, you can grow fruiting plants and there are exceptions like strawberries, which you probably should grow in this system. However, this system is specifically geared towards leafy greens like bok choy, spinach, kale, mustard greens, whatever you like, throw it in here and you're gonna have a fantastic time. So the way that Nutrient Film Technique works is that a pump from the reservoir at the end of the rail pumps water up a pipe and into the top of the rail. The water then creates a nutrient film on the bottom of the rail. That nutrient film, which is literally just a film across the surface of the bottom of the pipe, travels back down and into the reservoir. The reason that I love this system is because the plants do not need to have any form of media. It can literally just be bare roots on that film. You just need to find a way of getting the plants through the seedling stage and to the stage where you can actually put them into a system like this. Now, one method is using Jiffy peat pellets, like you can see has been done with these spring onions. 
And this is another example of why I can't just say, yes, leafy greens, or I can't just bulk a massive group of plants together because I am growing spring onions in NFT and the spring onions are doing phenomenally. Another way of getting the plants through to a system like this is using the cotton wool method. So this is cotton wool, which I have raised these seedlings within and it is an extremely cheap way of raising seedlings. As you can see here, I have lettuce seedlings and they are all just grown within cotton wool. I've stepped away from using peat pellets as I have done here with these tomatoes purely for the fact that these are about 16 cents each and the cotton buds are about, I think they're one cent each or something ridiculous. So for plants like these lettuce or these bok choy, it is way more cost effective to raise them in propagation media like this. Okay, so I actually don't have any Kratky or deep water culture systems running at the moment. This is a floating raft system. It's kind of a bastardization of the Kratky technique. It relies on the water itself to give the oxygen to the plants. So coming into the Queensland summer, it's probably not going to be as effective because when water is colder, it has a higher oxygen content. It has a greater affinity for oxygen and allows the gas to dissolve more readily into it. So I probably wouldn't use a floating raft system like this in the Queensland summer. Now, the way that the Kratky system works is the plants are held in place above a nutrient source and as they utilize the water, the plants roots grow down as the water level drops and oxygen is supplied to the roots in the air gap above the nutrient solution. Deep water culture is slightly different. This is where the oxygen is provided by saturating the water with oxygen using air stones and requires a little bit more maintenance than the Kratky method. When it comes to the Kratky and deep water culture methods of growing, you can grow large, fruiting plants in those systems, especially the active ones. However, the maintenance on those systems is fairly high, the active ones, and the Kratky technique can be used for tomatoes and fruiting plants. However, I found that other passive techniques are a lot more forgiving, and personally, I'd recommend those and we'll get to those. However, circumstances may actually make these techniques be perfect for your application. For example, the Kratky technique is powerless and passive. It's the only hydroponic system that can boast that you do not need grow media as well as you do not need electricity. The Kratky deep water culture methods can literally be used to grow anything. And utilizing Kratky as a method of growing your leafy greens in conjunction with other more active methods is a combination we'll be looking at in a little bit. And now we get to the wicking system, specifically here, the rain gutter grow system. The way that this system works is that nutrient is stored in a reservoir the reservoir gravity feeds down to a float valve, which creates a water level in the channel and wicks up supplying nutrients to the plants. Now, the method of wicking depends on the implementation of the system. It can utilize net cups, spikes with wicks in them. There are a variety of different avenues you can take. The nutrients and water wick up into grow media. Now, usually the grow media is a cocoa perlite substrate, although you can also use soil amended with cocoa or peat moss. There are other mixtures of wicking substrates that you can go with as well. In this system classification, I'm going to be including my wicking pot auto refill source of float valve designs similarly with the larger float box wicking pot designs because they're basically the same method of hydroponic nutrient delivery it's just that the physical dimensions are really the only change in these systems now that being said 
I actually think that that's one of the most important considerations when you're tailoring a hydroponic system to a type of plant. If it's an annual plant, if it's a biannual plant, or if it's a perennial, because you don't wanna be introducing a plant into a hydroponic system that is essentially temporary when the plant is a perennial. With the rain gutter grow systems, I wouldn't be introducing a fruiting perennial citrus into a plastic bag pot because I want that citrus to last years and years within its pot. And I want the method of hydroponic nutrient delivery to be consistent over those years as well. I don't wanna to have to continually move the plant and I also need the structure of the plant to be supported. And I've taken that into consideration with these pickling cucumbers. The pots they're in aren't perennial pots, they're annual pots however the structure i've got them underneath is able to take the size that i expect the plants to get to and the method of nutrient delivery is reliable enough that i don't have to worry about pumps failing or the root size clogging up small pipes which is especially true for cucurbits and that is why all of my cucurbits have always gone in my float box hydroponic system because even though I have had them in rain gutter grow systems with pipe reservoirs, the roots get into those reservoirs and absolutely wreak havoc. So having a large reservoir base underneath cucurbit style plants has meant that I've been able to escape the intrusion of roots into the hydroponic system because they have to get through first a fabric pot and then they have so much media to explore with the rocks underneath this system that they rarely ever get in and mess with the float valve and on the odd occasion that they have i've been able to get in with my hands and oh there's a frog in there <laughs> You're still there, buddy? <laughs> and remove the roots if I need to. And this is actually probably one of the most hands-off systems that I've ever made. I have never changed the float valve or any part of this system. All I've done is introduce new plants. Now, it is a high effort system to set up, but once it's set up, it is incredibly set and forget. I am still blown away by this system. You can even see it's created its own ecosystem. It's incredible. Now, it would be really hard for me to recommend a plant type for this system as I think that you can grow literally any type of plant within this rain gutter grow system and it will thrive. Here I have pineapples which is a bromeliad. On my right here, I have garlic growing. In the foreground, I have onions, two types of onions. In the back, there will be ginger and turmeric. This is the old ginger and turmeric system, the wick wedge hydroponic system, and it was incredibly productive. In fact, I just did a video on my second channel utilizing five kilograms of ginger to make ginger beer and I've been reaping the rewards of this system ever since, quite happily actually. <laughs> so specific plants that I think you can't go wrong with in this system. Tomatoes and capsicums, really any fruiting plant that has the same physical characteristics as this. Cucumbers, if you had structure, eggplants, etc. This system is perfect for all of the above and it is actually one of the only systems that I would recommend for rooting, rhizome, tuber, or bulbing plants because of its handling of media and nutrients. You can do them in other systems, but if you're in love with the simplicity and hands-off approach that the hydroponic technique, my recommendation for growing these crops soylessly is to use the rain gutter grow system. And this is what I'm going to be heavily experimenting with this year. As you can see behind me, I've got multiple different styles of bag and in front of me, I've got multiple different styles of potato. I'm just working with the new bagging system so that I can find out and deliver results to you about how is best to utilize this hands-off approach 
to gardening. Another fantastic use for the rain gutter grow system is herbs. Now you can definitely grow herbs in an NFT. My experience with herbs is they tend to like the system a little bit too much. And because in general, they're a perennial, ignore the basil, they will be more suited to a more permanent hydroponic system setup. If you introduce them into the NFT, you're gonna love that they're there, they're gonna love that they're there, and then they're gonna take over the entire system, essentially. Unless you've got a production line where you're growing herbs to a certain size, and then selling them to a supermarket. If you're using it as a home garden, you're probably better off having herbs in a rain gutter grow system, a Dutch bucket hydroponic system, or a flood and drain. Now, one of the only caveats with the rain gutter grow system is the expense of that media. Cocoa and perlite tend to be more expensive, especially when put up in comparison against some of the medialist systems. And this is why I will not grow my leafy greens in the rain gutter grow systems. It's not because the rain gutter grow system isn't capable so much as it would be a mismanagement of my resources to grow them in such a way. Now this isn't to say that you shouldn't do it. It's just that I've streamlined my systems because of the systems available to me. If you only had rain gutter grow systems, you shouldn't omit growing greens from them. You just need to assess your situation and implement the correct growing strategies for it. All right, so the next system I wanna to talk to you about is Dutch buckets. Okay, so Dutch buckets are either a recirculating or drain to waste hydroponic system. The bucket itself allows you to supply nutrients top fed into a bucket that then collects the nutrients and feeds it back into a pipe, either disposing of the nutrient or recirculating the nutrients. So the pipe will then deliver the nutrient back down and into a reservoir where the pump will then feed again on a timer or continuously. Dutch buckets are hard to talk about because they're extremely versatile. You can have no media with a lid and a neck cup. You can have multiple different styles of media, cocoa, perlite, perlite on its own, or you can have hydrogen clay balls. Now I've packed up my Dutch buckets at the moment, but we will be revisiting them in the future where we use hydrogen clay balls as the media in the Dutch buckets because I wasn't particularly happy with the shelf life I was getting out of the perlite that I had in these Dutch buckets. And when I'm implementing a system, I want it to be as cheap and reusable as possible. So for the Dutch bucket hydroponic systems, my recommendation would be to have them in companionship with something like an NFT, where you've got all of your greens handled and then utilize your Dutch buckets because you are going to have a limited amount of Dutch buckets for your fruiting plants. So your tomatoes, your cucumbers, your eggplants, and your high value crops like that. Now the next hydroponic system I wanna cover is, whoops, flood and drain. Now this flood and drain bed is being rested at the moment until I come up with a plan for a large scale flood and drain system that I'll be implementing very soon. I have grown pretty much every plant type in this system. And once they're set up, they're so easy to manage, especially when they're run with a bell siphon, that you'll find yourself just shoving all your extra plants into them because they're such a convenient, low effort planting arrangement. You can literally just shove a plant in here at any point. Now, there are multiple different styles of flood and drain system, and you can grow a variety of plants in them. As the aquaponics people know, this system is pretty much limited by your imagination. However, large perennials like fruit trees, I would probably stick away from introducing into systems like these. Not to say that you can't, you can literally do whatever you like. These beds are really, really good all-rounders. They manage roots really well because there is so much root space for the plants and they do a really good job of supplying nutrients and water to the plants at the same time as delivering oxygen because of the method of delivery, which is the flooding and draining of the bed, utilizing a pump 
from a reservoir. The flooding and draining action allows the water to flood in and drain out. As the water and nutrients drain out, they leave the roots moistened with the water and nutrients firstly, but they also pull oxygen into the gaps between the media and oxygenate the air around the roots as well. So they are a very productive style of hydroponic system. This style of hydroponic system is particularly good for plants that require structure to their roots. So if you are not planning on supporting a plant, flood and drain can be a really nice way of giving a plant structure so that it can hold itself up. It's an extremely versatile system. However, the effort involved in creating such a system and the limited space that you get means that usually you'll be putting higher value plants in flood and drain systems. Either that or the flood and drain media will have a dual purpose. For instance, as a biofilter for aquaponics to convert byproducts into more nutrients for the plants. Now, this is the point where I tell you which hydroponic system I like best. However, it's just not that simple. I actually think that the best approach to planning and maintaining a source of nutrition for your family is a multi-system approach. Yes, I love NFT. It is like my favorite system. However, on its own, it has some major downsides. There's no way that I could properly grow fruiting plants in it. I've tried before and I've failed many times and it's not to say that you can't, you definitely can. I've just found that it is more ergonomical to grow them in other systems. Ergonomical, that's probably not the right word. They are easier to manage in other systems. So the way that I'd like you to think about what hydroponic systems are best for your situation is media cost. Is recurring media cost going to be a problem? Power. Is passive something that you require and therefore media cost isn't as much of an issue? Maintenance, are you around all the time? These are the factors that you need to take into consideration. And then you need to look at the systems that apply to your situation that you can then implement for the plants you want to grow. A multi-system approach for me would be if you have power that is uninterrupted and want the most productive system approach, I would implement a nutrient film technique because it does not require any media other than like cotton balls or some other small amount of media to start the seeds in conjunction with either a Dutch bucket system or a rain gutter grow system. That allows you to grow your larger fruiting plants that require structure and whatnot in your Dutch bucket or rain gutter grow system. And then also have your nutrient film technique hydroponic system. As well as with the rain gutter grow systems, you can grow your rhizomes, tubers, roots, and bulbs in bags. For me, the ideal layout in that scenario where you have power would be Dutch buckets with tomatoes, capsicums, whatnot, your rain gutter grow systems with all of your tubers, your herbs, and your perennials, and your nutrient film technique with all of your greens and really fast turnover crops. If you do not have any power, you are going to be looking at something like a Kratky or Raft style hydroponic system for your leafy greens, where you can utilize the cotton wool method or the Jiffy Peep method for propagation and then introduce them into a raft or a Kratky style for your passive hydroponic requirements. You would then have your rain gutter grow system growing all of your fruiting plants as well as your bulbs, your roots, your rhizomes, and your perennials. The media cost within these systems is relatively more than the rest because you are replenishing them every few years. I've actually utilized cocoa and perlite for three years in a row, and it starts to get a bit iffy on the third year. If you're in a no power scenario, you may well actually to use this system in a more traditional way where you amend soil or compost, utilize the hydroponic nutrient as somewhat of an amendment to the soil 
that's in these pots and bags. So more of a fertigation of your bagged media rather than going all out and just buying hydroponic grade everything. The hydroponic method frees us to grow at any time of the year, anywhere in the world and whatever we like. The only question we're left to ask is, which system is for you? Indoor or outdoor? Power or no power? We all have the ability to grow and using these systems and applying those systems to your growing situation, you'll be able to. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time. On Hoochos.